How's it going eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to properly diagnose an engine that burns oil. Whether it be a blown head gasket or another issue, using the steps in this video, you'll be able to find out. With that being said, let's get right into it. So I have a Walker rear bagger 42 inch mower that came into the shop today. It has a Kohler Command 23 horsepower V-twin engine on it and the engine smokes real bad. Now because this is a V-twin engine, there's going to be two different cylinders and two different spark plugs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come over to the spark plug caps. I'm going to remove them and we're gonna go ahead and pull the spark plugs. Basically what I'm looking for is just if one of them is darker than the other, then it would indicate that maybe one cylinder is burning oil and the other one is just fine and then I can focus my attention on one cylinder. So I've pulled the spark plug out of the front cylinder here and I'm surprised this thing even ran with a plug that bad. Check this out. So this plug is just completely fouled. There is clear signs that this cylinder here has been burning oil. So I'm going to do the same thing, remove the plug from the rear cylinder and we're going to have a look at that plug. So this spark plug isn't showing signs that the rear cylinder is burning oil which means we can now turn our focus to the front cylinder. Now, if you're having an oil burning issue on one cylinder, it could be a blown head gasket on that cylinder. So now I'm gonna use my cylinder leak down tester and I'm going to pressurize the cylinder. Now, before we do our cylinder leak down test, we have to ensure that the piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke or at a position where both valves are closed. Because we have to remember that at this point, we're just trying to test the seal of the cylinder itself. We don't want any air leaking out of the intake valve or the exhaust valve. Now there's two ways of doing this. Sometimes I use a dowel. I go in and insert it into the spark plug hole so that it's down inside of the cylinder. And then rotating the engine over by hand, you're going to slowly bring up that wooden dowel until it starts going back down again, at which point you can find top dead center and then go ahead and do your test then. Or you can go up to the overhead valve cover here and you can remove what looks to be like four bolts here. You might wanna put a rag underneath because there's gonna be a little bit of oil in there but you can go ahead and pull off the overhead valve cover and then you'll know exactly when both valves are closed. So now that the valves are exposed, what we can do is turn over the engine just by hand slowly in a clockwise position until the intake valve here opens up. That'll let us know that the cylinder is traveling downwards on the intake stroke and the next stroke is going to be the compression. So the cylinder is gonna come back up and both valves should be closed. If you're unsure which is your intake and which is your exhaust, just look for your exhaust here. So this is your exhaust port, which means this is going to be your exhaust valve. And this over here is our intake valve. Okay, so using my dowel, I have now got the cylinder on the top dead center of the compression stroke. So I now have my leak down tester tube threaded into the spark plug hole. There's a little rubber O-ring on there, so you really don't have to crank them down tight. Normally you just go hand tight so they're snug and the O-ring will take care of sealing it up. So the cylinder's hooked up to this side. I'm gonna hook up my compressor to this side. We're gonna start filling it up and we're gonna see if there's more than 10% leaking. This cylinder leak down tester is made by OTC and the part number is a 5609 cylinder leakage tester kit. Now in this testing kit, OTC provides a pressure chart. So if we have 75 PSI from our compressor and there's only 64 PSI in the cylinder, then that number 15 there is the percentage of leakage that we have. The instructions say not to exceed a test pressure of more than 100 PSI. And it also says that a difference of five PSI between cylinders is satisfactory, but a difference of 10 to 15% indicates the need for further investigation. So I'm gonna to start to open up my gauge here. Air is starting to go into the cylinder. So we have 20 PSI coming in from my compressor and there's only about maybe eight and a half PSI holding in my cylinder and we can hear it leaking out somewhere. So I've now cranked it up to 40 PSI from my compressor and you guys can see we're only at about 12 PSI on my cylinder and there's clearly air leaking and we're just leaking out of the actual head gasket down there. Now if I go ahead and depress the intake valve, you guys will hear what an intake valve leak sounds like. Ready? So now you guys can hear air leaking from the intake. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn that back down and the cylinder should return to normal. And the same thing for the exhaust valve at about 20 PSI. If I go ahead and depress the exhaust valve here, you guys will notice that now we're leaking out of the exhaust. 
Now, in order to distinguish whether we have a blown head gasket or a bad set of piston rings or let's say a worn cylinder, if you open up the dipstick and you hear a bunch of air coming through, that means that the air is bypassing the piston rings, going down into the bottom end crankcase of your engine and then coming out of your dipstick tube right here. If the air is simply coming out of just the head because that's where most of the air noise was coming from, then chances are this engine just has a blown head gasket. Now, when someone thinks of a head gasket leak, they generally look for oil underneath the cylinder. But there's actually gonna be two different types of head gasket leaks. There's gonna be what's known as an oil to air head gasket leak, which means that the head gasket around the oil gallery port breaks and it breaks on the outside edge of where the head gasket is, which means that oil that would normally be supplied to lubricate the cylinder head is now leaking out to the outside air. That's called an oil to air head gasket leak. The second leak is going to be an oil to cylinder leak, which I believe we have here. So what happens is the oil that is supposed to be lubricating the cylinder head is simply leaking into the cylinder and then it's burning off there. Okay, so I've set the rear cylinder now to top dead center and I've hooked up my leak down tester. You guys can see now that we are at about 20 PSI and in the cylinder we're holding at about 20 PSI. So if we keep cranking this up, you guys are gonna see that we have almost zero leakage in that cylinder. And while we're at 30 PSI here on the rear cylinder, I just wanna pop the dipstick cap and let you guys hear what it sounds like. So you hear the difference in air pressure there. So that's gonna be your two to maybe 5% air loss through the piston rings going down into the bottom end of the engine. So if this was a case of worn out piston rings, or let's say it was an out of round cylinder because of an engine that overheated, maybe from a mouse nest that was packed in around the engine preventing cooling so the engine heats up really hot and I've seen cylinders warp because of mouse nests, then you would hear a lot more air coming out of the dipstick here and we would have a lot less pressure in our cylinder side compared to our compressor side. So basically the rear cylinder is good. We're getting a normal blow by reading, which is the air pressure passing past the rings. It's probably less than 2% because there was only a difference of like not even a quarter of a PSI. The rear cylinder is perfectly fine. There's no head gasket leak and the spark plug showed that. So with that being said, I'm fairly certain that the head gasket is blown in the front cylinder and it needs to be replaced. While I'm there, I'm going to end up replacing the valve stem seals because they're relatively inexpensive. I think they're like $12 and they just pop onto the top of the valve stem guide. They're just rubber. I'll put a picture up on screen and all they do is help make a seal on the valve stem so that the oil inside of your cylinder head doesn't leak down the valve stem into your combustion chamber. So I figure, you know, I'm gonna order a head gasket kit. I think that runs like $50 and I think it will take care of all of the oil consumption issues in the front cylinder. So now I can just focus on getting this front cylinder off. There's not a whole lot of room to work on this thing. You guys can see there's all kinds of pulleys and belts and Boy, this is going to be probably a little tricky and I'm gonna to have to do some research because, well, they don't really give you a whole lot of room. So the exhaust is gonna to have to come off. Probably I'm gonna to have to pull off that shroud on the other side. The carburetor and intake manifold is gonna to have to be popped off, but at least I've been able to narrow down the issue just doing a basic diagnostic and I can get back to my customer, tell them I'm gonna to have to order some parts because I don't have the parts for this engine. Now, I just wanted to note that there are going to be differences when testing a multi-cylinder engine such as this and a single cylinder engine. On a multi-cylinder engine, checking the spark plugs will allow you to find the specific cylinder that's burning oil, which will then allow you to do further testing to find your main cause. But let's say that you pull the spark plugs and find that all of your cylinders are burning oil you may have what's known as a clogged crankcase vent. This will cause the pressure in the crankcase to build beyond normal levels, which will force oil to go where it shouldn't be going. We have to remember that a clogged crankcase vent will affect all cylinders of an engine. So a leak down test in that instance would be highly beneficial because all of your cylinders would pass, telling you that it's not the head gaskets. And in my experience, having an engine blow out multiple head gaskets at the same time is very unlikely. Now, if you only have one cylinder that's burning oil and both the cylinder and the valves past the leak down test, then you could have a leaky valve stem seal or valve guides. Both of these failures will cause oil to slowly drip down the valve stem 
into the combustion chamber, which will cause the engine to smoke as it burns the oil that's supposed to be lubricating the cylinder head. And finally, if the cylinder fails the leak down test, like you saw here, it's most likely a blown out head gasket. As for what kind of head gasket blowout you may have, that will be determined by where the air is coming from or where the oil on the engine can be seen. Like I showed in the video, if you have an oil to air head gasket blowout, you'll most likely see a bunch of oil on the side of your engine. As for an oil to cylinder head gasket blowout, you should be able to hear the air from your leak down tester coming from either the oil passages or the area where your push rods go, as was the case on this engine. But with that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.